So the idea today is that we do some conditioning again for the whole body. We will be opening up the chest too. And we'll also be working a bit with hips, a bit with shoulders, and eventually all of these practices can help you have a stronger practice, a safer practice for back bends, also for inversions. We'll see where this class goes, depending on uh, how much time we get after the exercises. So the, the first part of this class will be um, part of the conditioning that um, my teacher Aleish gives me to do. Uh, so Aleish Grignon, you can look for him and he can help you if you want to work with your joints. It's great to have some more awareness of the joints and to lubricate the joints and also uh, to open up and to get stronger. So we'll get right into it. You will need something like a block or a bottle just to squeeze between your thighs. So what I am using is this container. <laughs> so anything that looks like a block, if you do have a yoga block, that's perfect, yes. You want to lie on your side, on your left side, because we'll start with the right hip. And you lie all the way down. You'll place the block, the container, the bottle in between the thighs, and you'll squeeze it there. So we'll start with internal rotation of the hip. Now from here, you bring your right hand on top of the hip, just to make sure that um, it's not moving. And we just want to start externally rotating the hip from the joint. So it's opening up and coming down. So make sure that there's a right angle in your hips, right angle with the knees, right angle with the ankles. And from here, inhale and engage the whole body, hold the hip there. And then as you exhale, internally rotate the thigh. See how it internally rotates and turn the foot up. Inhale, come back down, engage the body. Exhale up, check your range of motion. Inhale down. Exhale up. Perfect. And inhale down. One more time. Exhale up. And inhale down. Good. Release the block and come up. So that's the internal rotation with which we're working today. We will then work a bit with shoulders, a bit with our back bend. Now from here, you start with um, right angle in the ankles, right angle with the knees, and right angle here at the hips. You sit back. First, stay with your hands supporting you, and turn the right knee in. So when you turn the right knee in, you keep this idea of right angles. From here, you'll come down to the elbows. So the right thigh is an internal, in, in internal rotation. Maybe you won't be able to go that low because you want the glutes to stay down. So lift your feet a bit so that the knees are at the right angle. And then from here, we place the left foot on top, making sure that the hips are ground. Yes, that's it. So you can turn the right foot a bit closer to you just so that there's a right angle with the knee. You can stay higher up and breathe. And we take just a minute at first in this passive stretch, making sure that your glutes are grounded. So if your right hip is lifting, then make sure that you're grounding down through the right hip and just allow the weight of the foot to take the knee closer to the ground. Breathe here. You will feel it at the hip opening. If you feel it in the um, groin, inner groin, then find a slight posterior pelvic tilt. So tuck the tailbone under just so that you focus on the hip feeling the opening. Inhale here. And exhale, make your exhale longer than your inhale. Again, inhale. And exhale slowly. So from here, listen first. There will be two actions. There will be two exercises. The first one, is an active push with the right knee up. And you're just keeping the left foot on top to resist. The second one 
is an active push with the right knee down, taking the knee away from the foot. So we'll start with the first exercise, which is the active one. Again, make sure that your hips are grounded, so the glutes are not lifted. From here, start engaging the whole body, inhale, and start pushing up with the right knee. So my right knee really pushes up. The leg is trying to get up, the foot is trying to get to the ground, but the foot is resisting, the left foot is resisting. So push a bit more, get to 40% of your strength, 50%, engage your whole body, push a bit more, 60%, and hold it for five, Keep pushing with the knee up. Your whole body is active. Four, three, two. Push a bit more and one. Now from here, push the knee down. So remove the knee from the foot. Actively push the knee down, keeping the right glute grounded. Four, five, four, three, two, and one. And take the foot on top. And again, relax for a second. Maybe your hip can go lower. Now, don't worry about how it looks for you. Everyone's hips are different. My hips are quite open. So don't judge, just stay with what you have. And we'll go back to the first exercise, pushing up with the right knee. So push up, keep the glutes grounded. Keep the left foot resisting and push for five. Go to 70%, push up for four, 80%, engage your whole body, three. Push further up, four, two, and one. And then push the knee down, just the knee goes down. Keep the hips grounded, four, five, four, three, two, and one. Take the foot on top, see if it can go a bit lower. Keep the hips grounded. And then from here, slowly come up, very slowly, controlling the movement, make sure that you don't break anything on your way out. Good job. We'll come to hands and knees. We'll do this pose that I call lubricated runner. So from this tabletop, you push down, press down into the hands, press down into the left knee, and imagine that you have um, a, a, a glass of wine on your sacrum. So you want to keep the hips level. You don't want to turn the pelvis to the side. Keep your pelvis level so that that glass of wine does not fall. Press into the hands, press the left knee down, and from here, bring the right knee towards the armpit, pull the belly in, and then take the knee to the side, keep the pelvis level, and then from there, Internally rotate, so turn your heel up and take the foot back, extend to the back and then take the knee down. We're going the other way, foot back, keep the lower back straight. Then from there, go to the side, keep the heel up and then come back to neutral, bring the knee to the armpit and take the knee down. Okay, we'll do it three more times. Knee forward, knee to the side, internal rotation, heel up, knee back, knee down, and then knee back. Check your range of motion, but keep your lumbar straight. Move them into the side, internal rotation, then back to neutral, then knee to armpit, and then knee down. Two more times, keep pressing with the hands, inhale, engage the body. And then bring the knee down, keep breathing, keep the body engaged, knee to the side. Heel up, knee up, knee down, and then foot back, knee to the side, heel to the ceiling, heel level with the knee, knee in, and down. Last one. Stay with it, push strongly, engage the whole body, knee in, knee to the side, heel up, knee back, knee down, and then knee back, knee to the side, keep the internal rotation, heel up, then come back to neutral, knee in, and knee down. Good, whatever happens is good. Come back to lying down, no block this time. 
So lie down all the way on your left side and find those right angles again. Right angle with the hips, right angle with the knees. Hands supporting you. And from here, we bring the right knee up, just laterally opening the hips. So there's no rotation yet. We're just opening the hips. And then from here, we will internally rotate and externally rotate. The movement is from the hip. Internally rotate and externally rotate. Internally rotate, heel back and externally rotate. One more time. Internally and externally. Check your range of motion. Come back to center and calm down. Good job. We're going to the other side. So you'll need the block. Place the block in between the thighs. Whatever you're using, a bottle, a container. Okay, from here, you start with squeezing the thighs together. Find a strong body and bring your hand on the left hip just to make sure that the pelvis stays level. And remember, from here, we want to just internally rotate and come back. Internally rotate and come back internally and come back keep the knees at right angles internally and come back do one bonus time come back. remove the block and come to sitting back start with this position right angles in the arm right angles in the ankles right angles with the knees right angles with the hips hands back and then from here we turn the left knee in so again, there's that idea of right angles. Of course, if it's higher up, that's perfectly fine. You go back and then you take the right foot on top of the left knee. If you feel any knee discomfort, then it's probably because your knee is coming too much in or because you're pushing down onto the knee. What you want is the action to come from the hip. Keep the hips grounded and then just see how low your hip will go. My left hip is more open than my left but then my right hip and that's perfectly normal just stay with it remember the glutes are grounded this is more of a passive stretch but that doesn't mean that we completely collapse we stay fairly engaged breathe exhaling longer exhales than your inhales keep your glutes grounded inhale and exhale twice the time. Keep your hips grounded. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Keep the glutes grounded. And again, don't overdo it with the knee. If you feel any discomfort, then maybe you need to take the foot further out. And you shouldn't be pressing too much against the knee. It's the hip that's opening. The knee is not meant to rotate. It's a hinge joint, just opening and closing. So now focus on the ball and socket of the hip, rotating inwardly. Now from here, we will actively press up with the knee and keep the right foot on top to resist. So push up with the left knee. Imagine that the left foot is trying to get to the ground and keep the left glute grounded. Go to 60% for this first time. So really push, engage the whole body, your core, your deep core, your chest, your arms, your legs. Four, five, keep pushing. Four, your glutes are active. Four, three, your glutes are grounded. Four, two, keep pushing up with the knee, resist with the foot, four, one. And then from here, push down with the knee, four, five. Keep the belly in, keep pushing down with the knee, four, four. Three, two, and one. Just take the foot on top, and maybe you're lower than before, hopefully. Take a breath here, make sure that the glutes are grounded. And then from here, push up with the knee, up to 90% this time. So push hard. 
Engage the glutes, ground the left glute, push up with the knee, imagine the foot is coming down and the right foot is resisting. Four or five, keep pushing, 70%, 80%, 90% of your strength. Four, three, engage your chest, your arms, your legs. Four, two, and one. This time push down with the knee, four or five, keep pushing down, four or four. Three, whole body engaged, two, and one, take the foot on top. Maybe you're lower than before. And then slowly we'll come up, very slowly. Again, don't judge one side compared to the other. Don't judge your hips compared to anyone else's hips. We're where you should be today. Now from here, we'll come to our runner. So tabletop. Let's lubricate the left hip joint. Push into the hands, activate your core. And then from here, bring the left knee in, keeping the lower back straight. Open up the left knee. Open up by internally uh, rotating the hip. Then take the knee back and then take the foot down. Knee back. Laterally open, keeping the internal rotation, heel up, then come back to neutral, and come forward, come down. Three more times. Strong body, inhale, engage the whole body, and then knee in. Knee to the side, internal rotation, knee back, and knee down. Again, knee back, keep the glutes engaged, Knee out, keep the internal rotation. Knee in, knee to armpit, and down. Two more times, knee forward, knee to the side. Internal rotation, knee back, knee down, knee back, extend. Knee to the side, internal rotation, heel up. Then heel neutral, knee forward, knee down. Last time. Strong body, inhale, knee forward, knee to the side, heel up, knee back, knee down, and knee back, extend, knee to the side, internal rotation, knee in, knee forward, knee down, good, last one, come to your side, lie down. Now from here, we will again do the, um, the internal external rotation. So right angles, right angles, right angles, flex the feet, bring the knee up. And from here, internal and external rotation. So internally rotate and externally rotate. Focus on everything happening with the hip. External rotate two more times internally, externally, internally, and externally. Good. Bring the knee down and come to a kneeling position. Untuck the toes, come back to your heels and sit up. The first one will be similar to what we were doing in the previous times with lubricating the, L, the shoulder. So starting with the right shoulder, left arm in a fist, pull the shoulders back. Find external rotation of the right arm, cut out the chop. So this is external and this is internal. That gets complicated because as we go up, external feels like an internal rotation. But we just keep it like this, so external. Pull the belly in. Inhale, engage the whole body, strong fist with the left hand, and with an engaged body, you bring the arm to the midline, and up, keep the shoulder blade down, and start internally rotating, so turning the palm out, and back, all the way back, push in, and down, and then from there back, start to externally rotate, Bring the arm up, keep externally rotating, arm to the midline, and arm down. Three more times, up, 
rotate internally, push the scapula together, go down and then back, turn back to your karate chop, palm in the midline and to the side. Very good. One more time and then one more. <laughs> Two more times. Pushing, go down, keep the whole body engaged. Midline and down. Last time, karate chop to the midline. Once it's next to your nose, start rotating the other way, turning the palm forward, out and to the back. Squeeze and go back, go up, rotate and go down. Okay, this was the warm up, so it's fine. Whatever you did is fine. Now we'll come to our right side, so the side that we're working. So we'll come down onto our right side. You can use your block or a cushion. I also have a cushion there. I love using my block. Block is all, also feels nice. It's just for the head. So you come to rest on your block and you have your shoulder um, in front of you. So my right shoulder blade is on the ground. So this is what's pressing the ground. My shoulder is forward and my shoulder blade is on the ground. Now from here, what you want is to really send your butt back. So I'm sending my butt back and I'm straightening the legs. So my body is in an L shape, L shaped body, so that I'm able to then bring my arm in and I don't have my body on the way. So if, if I open up my arm too much, then it's not the exercise. I want the elbow to come down, not too far, but something in between. So not on my chest, not shoulder height, in between. Elbow is down, legs are straight, pull the belly in. And then from here, remember your shoulder blade, right shoulder blade is down and the shoulder is always on the ground. Yeah, it looks good. And then from here, we'll place the left hand on top of the right wrist and the right forearm and we'll push down. That's it, yeah. So this is internal rotation of the shoulder. You want to feel like you're uh, pressing down, forcing your shoulder to turn internally. And this is your active rest. Leave here, remember the exhale is deeper than the inhale. The exhale is longer than the inhale. Same depth, deep depth. Inhale. And exhale, keep pressing down. It's not active, it's just the weight of the left arm on top. Keep the shoulder blades down the back. Keep the right shoulder blades pressing the ground, the right shoulder pressing the ground. Inhale here. And exhale. You should be feeling it at the shoulder. We're opening the shoulder. Inhale. And exhale. So this internal rotation is important for all of the um, poses that have arms down. So in things like cobra pose, up dog, those are back bends that want you to have that internal rotation and to then push the chest through. So we can work with that later. Okay, so active stretch. Now I'm going to push up with my right arm. Right arm pushing up so you can form, uh, well, no, keep the palm flat both palms flat, and feel like you're pressing up against the left hand. Find 60% of your strength, and push, four, five, keep pushing up, four, four. Keep the right shoulder down, four, three, two, and one. And then push the arm down, so release the left hand, four, five, four. Again, feel that it's the shoulder, Three, two, and one. And then bring the hand on top and maybe you can go deeper. Take a breath, keep the belly engaged, the body engaged, inhale deeply. And then push up with the right arm, four, five. Go to 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90% of your strength. Engage your core, your legs, four, four. Whole body engaged, keep pushing up with the right hand, four, three, right wrist, four, two, keep the shoulder on the ground, keep 
pushing up for one, and then they move the left hand and actively press the hand down, four, five. Keep the shoulder down, four, four. Three, two, and one. Hand on top, press it down. Maybe you can go deeper. And really slowly come out of it. Okay, so just four more windmills. So come to your kneeling position. See how it feels now. Karate chop, so extend rotation of the arm. You bring the arm to the midline, and then you internal, you internal rotate exactly, and you take the foot, the arm back, and then all the way up, external rotate and come down. Open three more times. Keep the whole body engaged. Internally rotate. And then back. Into the midline. Two more times. Strong body. One more time. Okay, now from here, extend the arms, and we're just going to do internal and external rotations of the right arm. So pull the shoulders back, pull the belly, pull the shoulder blades down, and keep the arms extended, so palms extended, and we're just working with the right uh, humerus, so the right um, upper arm, and then from there, externally, and internally rotate. Keep the arms straight, keep the shoulder blade down. Just work with the shoulder very slowly. It's a lot of work. I mean, it feels like a lot of work. When you're really engaging, do four times one way and the other. And when you're done, lower down. And your right shoulder might be feeling Cooked, that's good. Okay, left side. Um, yeah, we start with the same. So, so kneeling position, fist. Left hand in a karate chop. Pull the belly in, open up the chest, pull the shoulder blades down. Bring the left arm to the midline. Internally rotate, keep the shoulder blade down throughout. Push, push, push. Arm down, keep pushing the shoulder blade to the right. Open up and come down. So external rotation. Once you come up, internal rotate, push, keep internal rotating as you're coming down. And up, keep pushing. Two more times. Keep the whole body engaged. Inhale, engage the whole body. Up. Okay, when you're done, you come onto your left side. Remember the left shoulder is slightly forward and you're pushing down. So the ground is pressing against the shoulder, against the left shoulder blade. So come down, lie on top of your cushion. Remember the left elbow is at like 45 degrees from the shoulder. The left shoulder blade is pulled down, the left shoulder is pressing down. Now from here, Make sure that your hips are at 90 degrees. Extend your legs so that there's space for the palm to come down. So again, this is internal rotation. Now from here, we bring the right hand on top and we rest here. Again, my left arm is more open than my right. That's normal. My right side is my strong side and it often happens that the strong side has less mobility. But that's good. We work with what we have and we build more strength in the weaker side. We build more mobility in the less mobile side. Make your exhales deeper, longer than your inhale. Keep 
Keep the left shoulder down, shoulder blades down the back and onto the ground. And then from here, we'll start pushing up with the left wrist. So remember, it's like you're moving from the shoulder. So push up and feel like it all starts from the shoulder. Push, engage the whole body, resist with the right hand. Four or five, go to 60% of engagement through the whole body, your abs, your chest, your legs. Flex your feet, four, four, keep pushing up with the hand. Four, three, relax your face, keep the body engaged. Four, two, keep pushing up with the arm. And one, and then pull the arm down, four, five. Four, keep pushing down, palm wants to touch the ground. Four, three, two, and one, and place the arm on top. So when you remove the arm from the top, it's normal if the, if the arm doesn't have as much mobility as when you press it, because your active mobility is not as strong as your passive mobility. That's, what, what, that's why we're building this strength, because with time you want to be able to access all your flexibility and not get there through uh, like passive stretches, through pushing yourself. You want to be able to use your Muscle to get there. Okay, press up with the left wrist, four or five. You want to engage your whole body more intensely this time, four or four. Keep your belly in, your chest up, four or three. Flex your feet, use your legs and keep pushing up with the hand, four or two. Keep your left shoulder down, four or one. And then reach down through the arm, four or five. Four. Keep the whole body engaged. Four, three, two, internal rotation, and one. Bring your arm on top. Maybe you go lower. Take a breath. And then very slowly come out. Come to your knees. Four windmill rotations. Right rear arm in a fist. Engage the whole body. Karate chop and then go to the midline. Open up internal rotation. Push to the right. Come back. Go back. Keep the shoulder blade down. External rotation forward to the midline and down. Three more times. Two more times, see your whole body engaged. Inhale, engage your body. Keep breathing, keep exploring the range of motion. Come back, keeping the shoulder blades up. And one last time. No rush, take your time. When you're done, extend your arms out. Pull the belly in, pull the shoulders back, pull the shoulder blades down, keep the palms flat. Reach away, relax the head. And then from here, you'll internally rotate the humerus and externally rotate. Four times. Explore the movement. Keep the shoulder blade down. Two more times, internally rotate, and externally. The palm is flat. The wrist, the, the elbow, they're just following what the shoulder is asking them to do. Okay, when you're done, very slowly, release. Close your eyes. Watch how the hips are feeling, how the elbows, sorry, the shoulders are feeling. Take a deep breath into the hips and exhale through the mouth. Relax them. Release your arms by your sides. Take a deep inhale into the shoulders. 
Exhale out, relax them. Okay. So what I was saying before is that uh, whenever you have the arms down in yoga, of course, there will be people telling you different things. Like what my teachers say is that when the arms are down, there's internal rotation of the shoulders, of the arms, and then you pull back. Of course, I'm, I'm overdoing it now, I'm accelerating. This is internal rotation, and then you push back to open up the chest. This has helped me a lot. Of course, you're not doing it like that. Your palms are by your sides, but you want to think internal rotation and pulling shoulders back rather than doing this. Now, this has helped me a lot because um, I could hear like different sounds when I had my shoulders in external rotation. So I would go to up dog and my shoulders would click, um, or I would do my vinyasas and my shoulders would click, or even like in different weird moments, like Danurasana holding the arms back. This is not the safest thing for the shoulders, whereas if you pull in, you find internal rotation, and then pull back through the shoulders, then you keep your chest, your shoulder attachment here safe, and at least for me it has helped me. So we will play with that for a bit. So from um, tabletop, we're going to um, knees, chest, chin, and then cobra. So knees, chest, chin is also an arms down position. So just to summarize, arms down means internal rotation and pulling the shoulders back. Arms up means external rotation. I'm widening the shoulder blades. Again, I'm accelerating, but this is arms up. Widening the shoulder blades and then elevating the scapula. So when I'm moving from up dock to down dock, I'm moving from arms down to arms up. And that's also in your vinyasas, when you're moving from Tadasana to Urva Hastasana, then this is internal rotation. And then on your way up, you external rotate and you reach up and you elevate and you pull the ribs. So this is what we'll try from our vinyas. Knees back, press the hands down. Knees just chin, cobra, and then down dog. So same idea like chaturanga, uh, up dog, down dog. Same shoulders. Find the internal rotation. So turn your, uh, the eyes of the um, elbows in, which is kind of different than maybe you've been doing it. But this is what you want from um, knees just chin and from chaturanga or at least this is what you'll try today. So internal rotation. Then start coming forward. Bend the elbows, keep the elbows over the wrist and bring the chest and the chin to the ground. Pull the shoulder blades back. This is a position where the arms are lower than the shoulders. So I'm finding this internal rotation and I'm pulling the shoulders back. It's back, shoulder blades back. From here, inhale into cobra, pull the belly, bring the feet together, keep internal rotation of the shoulders, but keep the elbows in. So that's tricky because if I find internal rotation, it's easy to open the elbows. So pull the elbows in, keep the elbows back, pull the shoulders back, open up the chest. And then exhale, press down, come to down dog. And as you move up, you widen the shoulder blades and you push away to elevate the scapula, finding an arms up position. One more time, inhale forward into a plat, find that internal rotation of the arms. So uh, armpits, uh, sorry, elbows facing in. And then from there, keep the elbows in as you lower. Knees just chin or chaturanga, keeping the elbows in and keeping internal rotation, that's tricky. And then reach forward to up dog, internal rotation, and you pull the chest forward. And then push away, downward facing dog, Widening the shoulder blades on the way. Widen, press inner hands, outer hands down, elevate the scapula. Inhale forward into your um, plaque, change it into an uh, internal rotation. Start coming down, internal rotation of the elbows, of the upper arms. Inhale, slide forward, up the or cobra, keep internal rotation of the shoulders and pull the chest through, and then exhale, push away, downward facing. 
widen the shoulder blades and push down. So that's very tricky because we're shifting from internal to external rotation and we're also shifting from depression to elevation of the scapula. We'll do one more time each, but first come down to your knees and come back to relax. Take a breath without thinking anything. Exhale through the mouth, let it go. One more cleansing breath, inhale deeply. Exhale through the mouth. Okay. Here we go again. Come up. Knees, chest, chin, and um, cobra. Hands under the shoulders. Already find that internal rotation. So the eyes of the elbows are facing in. Press down, start shifting the weight forward. You want to keep the elbows over the hats, and then you bring the chest down and the chin down. You find that internal rotation, and then you push the elbows back, sorry, you push the uh, shoulders back, pull the shoulder blades down the back. Inhale, slide forward, keep the same arms, same arms, elbows in, internal rotation, cobra, push the chest through, and exhale, push away, and now elevate the scapula, widen the shoulder blades. Chaturanga. Inhale forward into a plank position, already lose that wide. So push away and internal rotate the arms. And then exhale, knees down if you want to, but lower to chaturanga, keeping the elbows in, the arms in internal rotation, shoulders up. Inhale forward, up top, internal rotation of the arms, pull the shoulders back, shoulder blades down, and exhale, push downward facing dog. It's a lot of work with gymnastics. Pull the belly and breathing down dog for five. Remember, we're elevating the scapula and widening the shoulder blades. Four, four. Three. Two. And one. Inhale, slide forward. Roll shift forward. And exhale, come all the way down. Internal rotation of the shoulders. And low, 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 low. Reach the arms back. Shalasana, locust pose. So in locust pose, we have internal rotation of the shoulders. You guessed it right. The arms are back, so the arms are under the shoulders, which means that we open up the armpits out. So internal rotation means that the palms want to actually turn to out, outside. But we keep the back of the hands grounded. So press the hands down, and then from there, find that internal rotation of the shoulders. Release your legs back, bring your feet together, pull the belly, neutral pelvis. And then reach the chin forward and up. Internal rotation of the shoulders, but pull the shoulders back. Reach the legs up if you want to, and breathe, four or five. Press the hands down, reach the shoulders back, four or four. Keep internal rotation. Think that the palms want to turn out. Four, three. Keep the shoulders reaching back, the chin up, and the head back. Four, two. Keep the belly in, the ribs in, the legs reaching up if you want to. And one. Exhale, calm down. Optional vinyasa, but you'll have to do it right. So palms by your ribs if you want to go for it. Otherwise, rest. Tuck the toes, internal rotation of the shoulders. Push, inhale, upward facing top, internal rotation. Exhale, ah, um, downward facing up, external rotation, elevation of the scapula. Inhale, come forward, and exhale, come down. Internal rotation by keeping the elbows in. That's very tricky. Come down. But all of those tricky positions are getting you stronger and more aware and safe. It's those contrasts. Dhanurasana. So here we go. You bend the knees. If you don't want to do Dhanurasana, repeat what we did before. Otherwise, pull the belly in. Now from here, we reach the knees back, the legs up, and then inhale the chi forward and up, internal rotation of the arms, and reach back through the shoulders, and then maybe grab the hands, maybe keep the arms away, or five. 
If you grab hip and chair rotation and keep the shoulders reaching back or forth, use your glute to reach up higher. Four, three, pull back through the shoulders, up through the chin. Four, two, down through the shoulder blades, up through the glutes. And one, slowly you come down, pulling the belly in and releasing. Optional vinyasa, remember all the work. Elbows in, but internal rotation. Tuck the toes, push, inhale, roll over the toes, and exhale, push. Extend, widen the shoulder blades. Inhale, come forward, and exhale, lower with that internal rotation and the elbows in. Okay, we're going to do one more, which will be cobra pose or king cobra, you choose. So this time we will uh, open up the legs, mat with distance apart. We'll press the feet down, pull the belly in and reach forward, reach in and reach forward. Hands can be on the fingertips. Reach back through the shoulders. Remember, don't open up externally. Internal rotation, but reach back, chin forward. Inhale up, come to the fingertips. You can walk the fingertips back and come higher up. Keep pressing down through the hip creases. Keep reaching back through the legs. Reach up through the chest, back through the shoulders. Keep the elbows in, keep the internal rotation. Chin up, chin back. And then from here, you can bend the knees, and use your glutes to lift the legs. Four, five. Keep the head reaching back. Four, four. Keep the belly in. Four, three. Keep internal rotation and pull back through the shoulders. Four, two. And one. Slowly come forward. And we're moving to Ustrasana, final back bend. Keep the elbows in. Tap the toes. Push. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing. Inhale, pop onto your knees, feet first, and then knees to the ground. And bring your hands to the waist. Okay, so whenever our hands are on the waist, the, there's this action going on. Your shoulders want to internally rotate. So internally rotate means this. But then you pull the elbows back to open up the chest. So that we keep that internal rotation, internal rotation, but then we open up the shoulder by pulling the elbow back. So find that. So this is what you can do for Pasta Baramustasana. This is what you can do for um, Prasarita Uttanasana. So whenever, like a wide leg forward fold, whenever your hands are on the waist, the arms are under the body, under the shoulders, so there's internal rotation and you pull the shoulders back. Pull the belly in, press the knees down. Inhale, open up the chest by pulling the shoulders back and exhale, head back. Squeeze the glutes, four or five. Keep the belly in, keep your hands on the waist, four or four. Elbows reaching back, shoulder blades down, four or three. Squeeze your glutes, four or two. Reach your lower belly up, reach in and up. Press the knees down and inhale, come up. Exhale, come to your heels. We'll repeat one more time. If you want to lower the hands to the heels, you have two options. You don't have the option of coming down with one arm and then the other, not today. Both hands will come down at the same time. But your option is to tuck the toes so that you don't have to go as low or to untuck the toes so that you have to go low. If you don't want the hands to go down, stay with the hands on the hips. Good. Internal rotation. Pull the shoulders back. Pull the belly in. Reach in and up. Squeeze the glutes. Inhale, chin up. Keep the shoulders reaching back in an internal rotation. And exhale, chin up, chin back. If you can look at the back wall, go to grab the heels. Four or five. Pull the belly in. Press with the hands to lift the chest up. Four, four. If your hands are down, then Reassert re that internal rotation, pulling the shoulders in internal rotation, and then pulling the shoulders down to open up the chest. Four, three. Keep your head relaxed, the belly in, the rib cage up. Four, two. Keep pressing the knees down, the feet down to activate the glutes. Lift the glutes to the kidneys, the kidneys to the rib cage, the rib cage to the chest. Press down, pull the belly, and come up. And exhale, come down to your heels. 
Close your eyes, bring your knees together and breathe. Deepen your breath. Allow your body to digest all the information that it got today. Bring your hands, your weights to the fingertips. Come up to a kneeling position. Just do some wide circles with one arm. This time really moving the shoulder blades along so that you explore the whole range of motion and just so that you give that release to the whole arm and then go the other way. Other arm. Move with the shoulder blades, move with the shoulder, and go the other way. Arms to the sides, and just twist from one side to the other. Allow your arms to be quite soft, and allow your head to just follow along. Your hips also follow a bit but your belly stays strong just to support your lower back. You can go a bit faster. Keep the belly strong, the rest of the body just goes with the wind and then go slower. Slow it down and come to lying down on your back. Hug your knees. Hug your knees very tight, pull the knees down but imagine that the knees want to escape. So you're hugging the knees close to your body and the knees are pushing up, trying to leave. That lengthens your lower back. So keep grabbing the knees close, pushing them close, but the knees are trying to escape. The lower back is lengthening. Inhale into the lower back, exhale through the mouth, lengthen it a bit more. Inhale into the lower back. And exhale through the mouth, widen the shoulder blades. Bring the head to the knees, lean up. And exhale, release. Bring your feet down, knees back. And then windmill the knee. Uh, no, uh, what's the word? Bring the knees to one side and then the other. The thing that the, the cars are doing to clean their, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> So keep the belly slightly engaged, bring the knees to one side and then the other. Hips to one side and then the other. Belly, one side and then the other. Chest follows along, shoulders lift one side and then the other. And then start slowing it down. Slow it down. Bring the feet closer to the hips, arms by your sides, dynamic reach just three times. Pull the belly in, inhale, lift the chest up, chest to the chin, knees away from you, lengthen. Exhale, back down, arms by your sides. Press it down, inhale, lengthen through the knees, bring the chest to the chin, arms back, and exhale, arms by your side. Relax the head. Inhale through the nose, lift the hips, turn the pubis towards the chin, move the knees away, and exhale through the mouth as you come down. Open up the feet wider, bring the knees together. Feel free to stay here for Shavasana. Tuck the chin in, pull the shoulders back, lower the shoulder blades, and open up the palms to the sky. If you're more comfortable with the legs extended, then turn the toes out so that the feet relax. 
and take one deep breath from your roots all the way up to the crown of the head. Exhale through the mouth, release all engagements. Relax the whole body. Relax the crown of the head. Relax your hairline. Relax your forehead. Relax. Relax your right eyebrow. Relax your right inner ear. Relax your right nostril. Relax. Relax your left eyebrow. Relax your left inner ear. Relax your left nostril. Relax. Relax the bridge of your nose. Relax your upper lip. Relax your lower lip. Relax. Relax your jaw. Relax the heat of your throat. Relax the back of your neck. Relax. Relax your right shoulder blade. Relax your left shoulder blade. Relax the space behind your heart. Relax. Relax your right collarbone. Relax your left collarbone. Relax the space in front of your heart. Relax. Relax your abdominal wall. Relax your diaphragm, allow it to flow freely. Relax your rib cage. Allow the inhale to let it flare out freely. Relax. Relax your lower back. Relax your tailbone. Relax your sacrum. Allow it to expand. One by one, relax the layers of muscle at your pelvis. Relax your pubic bone. Relax your hips. Allow your hips to release. The 
the next few moments. Allow gravity to pull you closer and closer to the center of the earth. And whatever distraction might come up from your head or from outside your body, acknowledge it. It's there. It's there to say hi to you. And you come back to this feeling of surrendering. Let be. Let be. Very gently, start bringing your consciousness back to your body. Bring your consciousness back to your breath. And notice the power that lies in that breath. Thank 
Finish our practice in a comfortable seated position. We find an internal rotation with the arms and we pull the shoulders back to let the heart shine. Pull the belly in, allow the hips to relax in an external rotation. And then inhale deeply from your roots all the way up to the crown of the head. Enjoy every little movement of that breath up the spine. Exhale through the nose and allow the power of the breath and the power of the practice to settle in every little cell of your body. One more time, you can turn your palms up, but keep that internal rotation as you inhale up the spine with the shoulders drawn back. And then exhale through the nose and allow the practice to find its place in your body. It's always there. You always have the power of living. You can go palms to heart center. Take a bow to feel good, to feel strong, to feel fulfilled. You already won. This is the bonus level. So enjoy life. The light in me honors and celebrates the light in you. Namaste.